Now let us acknowledge the indigenous people of all the lands that we are on today. From coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory, that of the Inuit, the Métis, and the First Nation people that call this land home. Now I'd like to introduce to you our team, expert team that's going to be talking about the downsizing road map and our step-by-step -step guide for it. And that is our, first of all, our financial planner, Trudy Raymond. And those will remember her from last year. She came and talked about wills and estates with us. She believes that building long-term relationships with clients is the only way to help you and your family explore the financial options that are best for you at each stage of life. Each plan is unique to you. It starts with your goals. So let's sit down and discuss what they are. And we will work on a plan to achieve them. Now, Trudy is joined by Joanne and Stephen, who are expert real estate agents working in the Durham region. Joanne was raised in Oshawa and Stephen in Uxbridge, They're now raising their children in Whitby, right near me. Stephen and Joanne have always loved living in the Durham region, and it's close to Toronto, a city they love to work in as well. They like to trade, they like to go to find peace, sorry, exploring many conservation trails in the area. They love working with clients on their real estate journeys, whether they're helping first-time homebuyers, upsizers, downsizers, investors, landlords, or renters. They strive to provide personalized and exceptional award-winning service with a smile. Let's welcome these guys to us. Hi, guys. And they're all Hello. Hello. That's exciting. Hello. That's excellent. Um, so do you want me to just share my screen at this point and then we'll Absolutely. start walking through? All right, perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, let me see if, oh, I'm going to bring that down. And I hope everyone's doing well today. Okay. Let's just see. I'll uh, check with you, Jen, in a second if you're able to see my screen. There we go. Is that working? Uh, no. Uh, there we go. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, Jen, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, we're really Grateful to be here as a panel of people to be able to talk to you uh, about uh, downsizing, a roadmap, and a step-by-step -step guide. So the purpose of our presentation today, um, what we're going to do is share with you some of our expertise and insight, um, walk you through a typical downsizing journey, um, and hopes at the end of this, you're going to come away with a little bit more information uh, about what to expect, maybe take some of the mystery out of it. Uh, share with you, um, you know, some of the things that you should be prepared for, like the costs, maybe, um, you know, the services that um, your financial advisor or your real estate agents can help you with over this process and try to simplify this journey. Um, I'm Stephen. This is Joanne. And this is Trudy. We've known mm -hmm. each other for about a decade now. Um, we've become really close as we've worked together and helped many people, um, you know, along this path of their life. All right, so we have a quick disclaimer here just to let you know. Um, we've created this timeline to share with you today. It is a generic timeline, um, and the purpose of this is not to solicit any individuals currently under contract with other uh, financial advisors or real estate agents. Uh, today, we'll discuss various checkpoints along this journey um, and provide you with insight that may be helpful for you. So um, as we get into this, uh, this might be a, uh, a way for us to kind of interact a little bit with you right now. So if you're in front of your computer, um, um, think about this as I start to go into this, this first slide. There's lots of reasons for wanting to downsize. There's lots of reasons for thinking about moving from your current locations to another. I've listed a couple of them here on the screen. But if there are some that maybe you're that aren't on the screen that you've come across, feel free to drop it in the chat right now. And, um, and mention away, we'll take a look at them as we go through this and, and, um, and see if, uh, if they relate to some of the ones we're talking about here. Again, if this isn't, if that's not something you wanna do, that's fine too. We'll just continue on uh, with this as well. All right. Um, so in our experience, downsizing and moving can be a very stressful experience. Um, but what we found in our careers is that information is power. With the right information, you're going to be able to make the right decisions and make decisions that work for you. Um, so 
what we're, we'd like to do on this presentation is one, walk you through this, share some information, but also maybe share some little tips and tricks with you along the way that will help you to make this journey or this experience much more, much better for you. So on the screen here, you're gonna see a few points to consider uh, that speak to the benefits of downsizing. Many people, um, for many people, the size and space of their current homes might become a little bit too much. Uh, the maintenance of it might become a little bit too much to, to deal with. Cutting lawns, uh, repairing roofs, furnaces, making sure all of these things are, are put in place. So uh, there's different reasons why people might consider downsizing. Another one that might be is mobility issues, getting around. Um, we recently worked with um, some wonderful clients that the stairs in their house became a big issue for them and it became worrisome for them. So we helped them to find a way around that issue. So some of the things you're gonna come across are um, usually with downsizing is lower utility bills. You'll be probably moving into a smaller space. So your utility bills won't, won't be as much, um, which means that you'll generally have incre in increased cash flow because that money isn't going to paying these bills. Fewer maintenance costs like repairing roofs, and uh, windows and things like that, that usually doesn't apply with things uh, with, with downsizing. Um, reduced clutter in, in the area, um, less cleaning, less financial stress, but more importantly, increased mobility. Okay, before we get into the roadmap and the stops along the way, we wanted to touch on some potential costs. Moving, as you know, can be expensive and it can be overwhelming. So we've put on the screen an example of some costs to consider when you're moving. Now, not all of these are gonna to apply to every move. If you're moving into a retirement community, you wouldn't have to pay land transfer tax or if you're going to a rental, but just to give you an idea of some of the expenses to consider. Now, when you're working with your real estate team, your financial advisor, and your lawyer, they will all help you to make sure that you're not having any surprises at the end of the day and keep you informed on all of these uh, different costs. So one of the three things, there are three main reasons that I have clients come to me with this type of scenario and considering downsizing. And one of them is the lump sum injection of savings from the proceeds of their home. So just taking a look at in October last year, CBP average monthly maximum payout was approximately $758. Even if you couple that with additional government incentive bonuses, we know the cost of, of inflation now, it's, it's crazy, like it, it's too much. So at that point, we then start to reevaluate what is it worth to us to have retirement on our terms. What I've also seen since the since the onset of COVID is actually clients are wanting to provide living inheritances to their kids or their grandkids. I mean, you guys know the cost of buying a home these days, especially first time home buyer. It, it's hard, right? It's difficult. Right? It's too hard. And then there's also post-secondary education. So what better way to give that is in your living years and say, let's do a lump sum injection of that. Bottom line, the idea is that you have more control and more flexibility on your retirement income to sustain you for what could be 30, 40 years. So why not consider that? Okay, now it is time to move on to the roadmap. And our first stop is six months before you wanna move. So it may seem like a long time ahead of your move to chat with your real estate professionals and your financial advisors, but it's actually really important that you meet with them when you're thinking of making a move, even before six months. So the reason why is you really want to find out what your property is worth in today's market. So you can have the information to see, is this the right time for me? Mm -hmm. As I'm sure you've all seen across Canada, this real estate market has been fluctuating over the past few years, and you'll really need a local expert to come in and give you the current value of your home. We've had in Durham region here in Ontario, just east of Toronto, we have had a declining market last year. And just in the last couple of weeks, it's actually started picking up. There's more buyers. 
we're seeing multiple offers again. So you just never know when the market is going to shift and you want to have a local expert by your side. Now, how this is usually done is it's a pretty informal first meeting. We would come by your home, your real estate agent would come by your home and just take a tour with you, walk around your home, chat about different updates that you've made. How old is the furnace and air conditioner? When did you last do the shingles? Just pretty informal, about 15, 20 minutes. And then we would leave, go back to our office, take a few days to do our homework. We're gonna look at recent sales in your area. We're going to look at current listings and we're gonna come back and sit at your kitchen table with you. And we can tell you what the value of your home is at that moment. So then you can take all of that information over to your financial advisor. <laughs> and I think that's why we work well as a team is because I myself, I come to you with at the kitchen table. We have we chat over coffee. It's very casual. We'll look at a discovery call using the information that uh, your real estate team has provided to you, but we'll include it into incorporate what is it that you're thinking of? Um, why are you looking at doing this? But then we also have to consider from a financial perspective, what are the government benefits that you're currently getting right now on top of the CPP and OAS? Are there RSD, R RDSP situations? We all have to be mindful of that. Are you income splitting, pension splitting? There's so many factors. We can put that on paper and develop that while monitoring your cash flow, your monthly cash flow. And it's really personalized to you. I mean, there's there's no, at the end of the day, this is about you. It's not about us. It's about what makes it better for you. Definitely. So then we move, yeah, well, this is it, right? So now at the five month mark. Yeah, so at the five month mark, it's important to uh, discuss and um, uh, plan out for your future. And so discussing some of your dreams and what you want to do in the future is a big part of this. Uh, we encourage uh, our clients at that point to bring us into the conversation. Um, recently, we sat down with some clients and they had asked us to um, not just sit down with them, but sit down with their adult children and talk to them about their options so that they could keep the whole family informed of what was going on. Um, from that uh, discussion, we were able to work out something that worked out well for them that their adult children were aware of. And we put together a plan of what we should do. We then started to look at um, different options of living options for them for dwellings, like uh, were condos the right place for them to be? Did they want to rent for a little while? And we actually took the time to tour them around different locations and took them to rental uh, locations and took them to condos and bungalows and let them see what this was like and to imagine whether or not they could see themselves living in these uh, these uh, dwellings for the rest or for the for the the time being. So at that point, then we're looking into more of a refinement of the plan. I'll do it. I'll introduce uh, scenario based planning. So what I can do is a couple of options based on those tours that you've done with Steve and Joanne. One of them could be, what does it look like, Trudy, if I sell my home and move into a condo? What does that look like from a cash flow? and a retirement projection of income over the next 30, 40 years. Second option could be, yes, but you know what? I, I like the way the feel was from the retirement living community. So what does that look like? How can I make that work? And we'll look at your numbers. What is affordable to you? What do you resonate with? And what's beneficial for you? Again, just like Steve and Joanne just said, we also include your beneficiaries in that if that conversation surrounds the living inheritance part of it as well. Um, it's, it's a very important discussion yeah. to involve as many people in the decision-making process as possible so that you have all angles covered. So around the four month mark, um, this is a good time to start decluttering or rehoming some of the possessions that you have. Um, this can be sometimes a really daunting experience, especially if you've been living in your home for a long period of time. Um, one of the uh, families we were working with had been living in their home for 53 years. And so we were able to take the time to kind of guide them through that with uh, checklists, um, partnerships that we had, whether it be storage companies or people to come in and help them declutter, um, general contractors, painters, electricians to help you know modernize and fix things that needed to be fixed. Um, 
And then in some cases, we even brought in our teenage sons, uh, which was really great. They were able to lift a lot of heavy stuff up the stairs and down the stairs and move it around. And the best part about it is they like to work for pizza. So it keeps things uh, moving really well. Okay, so now we are at the three month stop. This is where your real estate team will really take over. So you've done your part, you, and now it's time for your real estate team to really make your property shine. This is when we're getting ready to list your home, put the for sale sign up. We, we provide several professional services to clients, which may include professional cleaning, staging to get your home ready to look its best, magazine worthy, uh, so that it can really appeal to any buyer who comes through. We also have professional photography and videography come in because you only have one chance to make a first impression and that first impression really matters to the buyers in this market today. They're looking at photos online and videos and they wanna see what your home looks like before they'll come and see it in person. And this process takes about 10 business days for us to put together. Now, keep in mind, all of these, um, even the timeline that we're giving from six months uh, and working our way down, these are our suggestions to, for things to be done. If you happen to find yourself within that time frame, it's not too late. You haven't, you know, missed the bus or anything like that. Um, but, you know, give your uh, real estate or financial advice, your financial advisor a call and get them involved in the conversations so that they can help point out um, ways in which th they can be able to help you through this journey. So one thing actually that just triggered me guys is Jen, if you, uh, so for all, all on the call, if you have questions, just write them down. And at the end, we'll provide ample time to ask them uh, if you, if you feel so comfortable to do so. So just make sure. And Jen, if you don't mind, um, if you could help manage the chat with us, it's hard for us to see. I figured you would, but I want to, I don't want to yeah. assume. I'm on it. And just to let everybody know, there will be a handout that I will put on tomorrow's email. So you can <laughs> You'll be well informed and have, have the lots of all the information. <laughs> okay. Speaking, thank you. So speaking of informed, so usually around the three month mark, I don't know if anyone's paying other uh, paying attention, but you haven't had a touch point with your financial advisor at this point. This is a great opportunity at the ten day mark to say, hey, do a quick check in call. Doesn't have to be a long and uh, daunting process. Nothing has changed. House went up for sale. Uh, and uh, we'll be having some news shortly. So keep keep everybody in the loop as much as you can. That way, if there's any changes, we're, we're well aware of everything going on. Um, and then we're finally kind of winding on the next stop, which is what, Joanne? Two months prior. <laughs> so around this part in your journey, um, you're going to start to finalize a lot of your plans. Um, you're going to start packing, uh, booking your movers, um, and you know, getting all that sort of stuff done. Again, if, if this um, generally becomes something that's overwhelming or you're not quite sure um, what to expect, speak with your, uh, your professionals, uh, like the, your real estate agents. We can provide you with checklists. We can provide you with guidelines about what you can do to um, make the most of your time and, and help you through this process. Definitely walk you through the process. Yeah, yeah it, it, it can be overwhelming. Um, at this point, then we look at the update call. So we'll talk to numbers, re look at the numbers. I'm always about making sure the bottom line makes sense. And then we add a different layer into it, which is now we're gonna be more strategic in asset allocation of those funds, which accounts, investment accounts, savings accounts, whatever kind of account we've de deemed as appropriate. Now we look at what makes the most sense, but from a holistic perspective, we're also looking at tax considerations. And what I had mentioned before, was making sure those government incentives, if any, don't are not negated in that whole process. We always want to be mindful of all of the moving parts, which which is kind of nice because then you have a second set of eyes on it and making sure that the experts in the field, right? Yes, that is right. So now we come to our stop at about one month before you're making your move. The sold sign is up. You've started planning your move. Don't worry, we're not going anywhere. We <laughs> don't take off as soon as that sold sign's up. We're with you for the whole journey. And the last month is a great time to change your address, call utility companies, and you'll be meeting with your real estate lawyer sometime with close to your closing date. 
Canada Post has a great mail forwarding service that you can use. There's a website to change your government ID and health cards. And of course, your real estate team can help provide a checklist to make sure you don't miss anything along the way. And this is the perfect time where I introduce and us actually as a collective will introduce certain members of that power team for you. So that could be a home and auto insurance uh, company. It could be discussions about life insurance policies now that things are changing. A mortgage broker, if that's applicable. And even the will, if you need to do a codicil or an update in general or redo it as a whole. So this is where we will then integrate at those appropriate times those professionals to help you in in your corner. Yeah, one of the things that I think um, is unique about the services that both Joanne and I and Trudy provide and why we tend to work together is we try to remove the friction from people's uh, experiences. We want to make it as smooth as possible. So we're uh, always trying to find a way to provide individuals with the information they need uh, when they need it. Um, so that they can make informed decisions and that they don't um, find too much um, uh, so that so that the processes stay smooth. A little while ago, I had the opportunity to sit down with uh, two wonderful human beings. Um, and uh, a little we Joanne and I had the opportunity and Trudy, actually, we all work together with uh, Ted and Irene. Um, they they're going to share a little bit about their story. Uh, uh, it's about a two to three minute video. Um, about why they decided to downsize and their experiences uh, downsizing. Um, and I think, you know, some of you may feel some familiarity with their experience as, as, um, as they went through this um, and maybe feeling some of the same uh, um, uh, pressure points that they, that they felt with it. Um, so uh, I'm going to click this going. Uh, Jen, if for some reason you can't hear it on your side, let me know and I'll do some edits. But um, we're going to let you see a little video about what Ted and Irene, uh, Ted and Irene's experience. Ted and Irene, thank you so much for being here. Well, first, we're going to talk a little bit about your experience um, working with Trudy Raymond at Investors Group. Trudy has been our financial advisor for many years, and we uh, happened to have a meeting with her and said that uh, we needed to consider selling our house and downsizing and did she know a good real estate and immediately she did and that's how it all started. <laughs> um, Trudy's a financial person and obviously well, this is a very financial uh, proposition and so we needed somebody that was reliable and she's very reliable and very easy to get along with and of course being our financial advisor we were lucky to have her. Well, we went, she sat down with her, went through our finances, um, what we thought we would get for the house and um, what we would have to pay maybe for rental or selling or senior residence, every, all that required all the financial stuff. We need a good financial advisor. Can you tell us a little bit about your family home? And what reasons were you considering for downsizing? We had lived in our family home for 53 years. So it meant we only moved from England to Scarborough to Oshawa. And that was it. It was getting too much. The stairs were getting too much. Then it's time to go somewhere where we don't have the stairs. So that's how it all started. Um, and what was your experience working with the Lavoie team? The whole process was the best for us because we had Stephen and Joanne a while who were very patient with us. <laughs> we knew that we couldn't rush it because it would take a long time to consider getting in and out of the house and going somewhere else. Well, it was very easy. It was calming because everything, they explained everything so that we would understand it and what we had to do and what we had to go through and set up the times where you were easy to access as well. Like when we had questions where we got answers very quickly and not left hanging. Because <laughs> we were very, very, very thankful we had all the help that we had. Otherwise it would have been really scary. <laughs> all right. I love them. <laughs> 
So um, here, we'll jump to the next one. So we're putting our contact information up here on the screen. If you have any questions or things like that, feel free to reach out to us. But we can open up the time right now to some question and answers uh, with the people who are on the, on the call um, and share a little bit of our experience if there's something we didn't touch on. Okay. You can either put something in the chat or you can wave in the uh, Zoom window if you want to unmute, if you have any specific questions that you want to ask anyone. Well, oh, go ahead. I should, I should mention while we're on this call, I know there's people from all across Canada. Uh, if you are looking for a local agent, we do have a network across Canada mm -hmm. that we can help you find a good local realtor in your area. Just yeah. mm -hmm. put that out there. Absolutely. Good point. I think everybody needs a coffee. <laughs> well, I think we have one question here. Oh, question no? Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Do you want to unmute? Yeah. Um, I'm kind of in here going, my goodness, I walked into the wrong room because um, like I moved from an apartment with my son into a subsidized apartment. And that's pretty much why I moved. And it's the size of a shoebox with windows and high ceilings. Um, so I thought that downsizing was gonna be, you know, like more trying to manage the clutter and, and like do what you don't need anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just gonna listen to you. I'm going to suit my parents. I'm trying to listen so that I can see if there's anything that will suit my parents. So. Yeah, you make a really good point, Kathleen. So downsizing is an, is is one, um, sometimes downsizing your abode, but it's also finding the right people to help you manage the, the clutter or finding ways around it, storage solutions. Um, Joanna and myself, we have a wide partnership of people, whether they be storage companies or individuals who can work people through what to get rid of, what to keep and things like that. So if anyone has any questions about things like that or would like to you know, be introduced to some people in the Durham region, um, there's a wonderful lady who does, uh, her, her name is, the, her company name is Downsizing Diva. Um, and she'll come in and she'll help you figure out what to uh, get rid of, what's personal, and even some of the personal things, um, what to do with those personal things if you wanna keep them um, and how to store them and things like that. It's a big, it's a big process. So it's nice to have professionals helping you out. That's right. That's right. I did see a, a question come up from Maddie. So thank you very much. Uh, what is a reasonable amount? This is probably for you guys. What's a reasonable amount to spend on, is it renovations, Jen? Is that what I saw or, or updates? Well, up to update their house. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what we do for our clients is we have a team, a professional stager who's actually also an interior designer and we can have her come and do a consultation in your home as soon as you're able to have her over at the sooner the better. And she can give you along with us, of course, your real estate professional, a really good idea of if a fresh coat of paint is gonna make all the difference in your house if uh, changing a few light fixtures might help. There's a lot of cheap and cheerful updates that you can do that aren't gonna break the bank, but can make a huge impact. Even just changing hardware on your cabinets, maybe updating the doorknobs, the little things like that can really make all the difference and you don't need to be, in some markets you may need to, but in this particular market in Durham, you don't need to be going and gutting your kitchen and like getting into huge renovations. I really recommend you speak with a local real estate agent to see how the market is and what will work. I hope that uh, answers your question, Maddie. Yeah, and if um, anyone has a follow-up question, like Maddie, if, that, um, if you had a follow-up question to that or something like that, let us know. We're more than happy to uh, share some of our insight. Um, and, yeah, and ways to help you. It's tough to put an exact number on it. Everybody's house is different. Everyone's property needs, some people don't need to do anything. Some people might need to do a lot more. So it's pretty individualized. Yeah, and some quick and easy, like curb appeal is a big uh, thing um, when people walk up to the front. So, you know, in the summer months, having a few potted plants out front, they're very inexpensive, but it can brighten up the, the, the entryway to your home. 
um, makes people feel a little, you know, welcome as they come in. Um, and then, you know, a big part of it and through, as Joanne kind of mentioned it, we have a complimentary session that we would do with the stager. And a lot of that is just what stuff to remove and what stuff to pack up. Um, you're going to be moving anyways. So some of these things you could pack up a little bit three months earlier and put away and things like that. The general idea is less is more uh, because people like to come into a place. If you've you know been into a hotel uh, recently, um, you'll see that it's, things are spaced out, you know, minimum amounts of furniture and things like that, because it gives that open uh, feel to it. Um, and it allows people to kind of uh, have that same experience when they walk into a place as well. I think it's important to um, putting myself in a client or someone who's looking to downsize is there's a lot of emotional attachment to the home. And when you have someone coming in to tell you to take this out and uh, don't, we're going to change the furniture up. It, it can be a personal attack. Mm -hmm. And from a testimonial perspective, speaking from Joanne on behalf of them, they're very compassionate they understand that sensitivity of discussions. You've been in this home for 40, 50 years. You have memories in there. And I think that with us respecting that, it makes the process a whole lot easier as well. So I, I really- Definitely. It, yeah. it, it's a good- Definitely. And any <laughs> suggestions that we would make or our partners would make are just that. They're yeah. suggestions. They're- the best case scenario, but you can do as little or as much as you decide to do. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. I'm curious, what do you, what do you find that most people, um, what is their decision, their main decision, why to downsize? Like why now? Are you speaking from us or for them? No, for you guys. Okay. Yeah. Do, with the, your clients that you work with, what do you, is there like an over, is there like one big thing that they come to you? So a lot of it, so a lot, depending depending on, of course, um, where you are in your life journey. Um, but um, a lot of people find that mobility um, as, you know, uh, we get older, uh, becomes that much more of something to, to contemplate. Um, also, just, you know, sometimes it's the size of the garden that they had, you know, like they, these individuals who love gardening and doing some of these things, but the maintenance on the property and, you know, um, doing all that stuff becomes much more um, restrictive for them. So moving to a smaller place or moving to a condo and having like a, a balcony garden is something that becomes much more effective for them. They can still do the things that they love to do, but do it in a different, do it in a different way. Yeah. And I'm sure Trudy sees this too, where people do want to give a living inheritance. That is another reason that we see as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. I think Sonia has got a question. Hey, Sonia. Uh, yes, I was wondering, Trudy, what sort of, um, it, when somebody decides that they're, uh, you know, once they get the proceeds of their sale, uh, that they're going to invest, uh, what sort of things do they invest in? Do they, are, are they investing in, in something they've already had or something new or um, in um, uh, somehow getting a uh, an income month, a larger income monthly uh, from their investments. Could you talk a bit about that? What a great question. <laughs> um, it really, like, I hate to sound cliche, but it does depend on what you're looking to achieve. So from an investment perspective, perhaps an actual investment account does not apply. Maybe it's something like a high interest savings account or we look at an annuity where it pays a monthly income. That depends on your tax situation. Lately, I've been finding a lot of clients are just putting it into a tax-free savings account and drawing from that because there are no tax implications and they've already started to what we call in the industry, riffing it out. So your RSP has already been converted to an income fund at that point and they don't necessarily, because there's maximums and minimums involved, they'll just push it through their TFSA so then they don't have to worry about that in the future. Does that answer your question, Sonia? Yes, it does. Thank you. A little okay. more accessible, the money. Well, exactly. It's all about accessibility and being more fluid. That's a good, that's a good point. And a, a living inheritance, that, does it just mean that there's less um, taxes that people would have to pay? There's so much more tax efficient strategies, Jen, like 
at that point, especially if you're liquidating your house. So I don't want to get too technical, but let's say um, we have two people, one has passed and now we have the, the, the surviving spouse. That property now, once that surviving spouse passes, unfortunately won't just naturally roll over to their beneficiaries, their children, without a trigger of what we call capital gains. However, if the client or that surviving spouse decides it's in my best interest because it, I can't manage this place anymore, then we look at, okay, once you sell it, now the money is liquid. There, there is no capital gains because there's a what we call a primary resident exemption. So the owner of that house no longer needs to worry about the capital gains or capital losses. And then that money then can siphon into the beneficiaries appropriately. And that's where that estate planning comes in because then we can be more strategic in the tax situation. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's like, I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> no, 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 it's, yeah, no, it's important to know these things. I think people are thinking about all these things. Absolutely. In fact, um, if you don't mind, I've got a quick question for Trudy. Oh. <laughs> when it comes to like um, the, like what, what have you seen some of your clients um, do with that, those funds? Like, um, do they usually reinvest into a property? Do like what what sort of things um, have you seen uh... lately? Yeah. It's been a lot of them are injecting them into their retirement income, and I'm not gonna lie, they want to take one family trip with everyone. So like 30 people, they'll pay to go to Jamaica for a week because they haven't had that chance to be with their grandkids and their kids and their spouses. They just said, let's put it all on red. Let's go. <laughs> That's fun. So it's about, but obviously we do that planning, yeah. right? To Absolutely. make sure that that doesn't run their whole yeah. system dry. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially I think since COVID, we're all of a, of a different mindset where it's like, we have to live in the moment. Let's enjoy the time we have with our family, which is mo most important. Mm -hmm. And because they're no longer working, they have the time. So now they just need the you know, that element of time and money. Now they just need that injection of money. And I mean, speaking from parents, to, as parents, we don't want to see our kids suffer. You know, if we, no. if we have the financial ability to help them, then I would think we would do what we need to do without in, impeding on our lifestyle. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. What if people want to move to like a different city? Or somewhere warmer. Do you guys deal no. with that kind of stuff? I yes. love it. Yeah, we yeah. Do. that's a great question. Um, do you know? Yeah, so we do have clients who want to move to different areas in Ontario or even different provinces. We've had uh, clients who are on their way to retirement who wanted to move out to the East Coast. So we put them in touch with a good local realtor. We find a good local realtor, and I'm sure. Trudy can find you a good local financial advisor to make sure you have a team that is trustworthy and works like we do. Yeah. So um, as you'll notice on the screen, Joanne and I, we're really fortunate to be part of the Royal LePage uh, brand franchise. Um, Royal LePage is a wonderful Canadian brokerage uh, or real estate company. And with we have access to um, uh, amazing uh, salespeople all across the country uh, and throughout North America. So, you know, it's a matter of us, um, you know, you let us know what you're looking for and then we can track down some wonderful people that will, you know, uh, take good care of you uh, where you go um, yeah. and introduce you to those individuals. Local experts really matter, especially for real estate transactions because every market is so different. So we're not gonna try and get more business by going as far away as we can. We want to get you the local expert. So we will refer you to somebody who is a local expert in the city that you want to move to. That's and great. from a financial perspective, it's really important to have someone that really is in your corner. Uh, I have clients right now that are snowbirds. So what they've done is they sold their house and now they co-bought a property with their kids, but they took over the walkout basement on the water and their kids are up, the, uh, their son and his family are up on the, on the main floor and they're in Dominican right now. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's from a tax perspective. So even as simple as moving out East, 
there's still a, ta a different tax percentage out there. It's really important to be able to work with someone who understands that because the money then moves out of Ontario in this case, and then it will go, or in some cases, if they're going to Florida, or I've seen an influx of people moving to Texas and um, Arizona. Mm -hmm. So then we look at the tax laws there and how that works. And it doesn't make sense to keep some money in, in Canadian funds in Ontario. But again, this is a very customized I don't want to overcomplicate and, and want to make sure that this is a simple process. I think the message that we can all share is if you have questions about your specific situation, reach out to us. And if we can't help you, we will be darned to find someone who's just as trustworthy and equally as credible to make it happen for you. That's good. <laughs> That's good. It's such a an emotional thing, especially if people have been living in their houses for it decades. really is. Yeah. I mean, home is where the heart is, really. It's yeah. where you raised your family and where you're living. So it's definitely emotional to take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can see why you need a, a, a thoughtful team to be with you, especially if some people want to move and other people don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and That's usually happening. that, exactly, I was going to say more often than not, you'll have one party who's more resistant to the change mm -hmm. or the thought of it. And then they'll slowly come around or they'll delay it. But at the end of the day, that's kind of we're more counselors than anything. It's true. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we have met with clients where the, that was the case. Oh, One so was sorry. more resistant and we maybe we meet a year before they actually decide, but the one who isn't resistant is like, come over and talk to us. So we'll have an initial, oh, a really casual initial meeting and then check back in in a few months how's it going no pressure it's a huge decision and it's your decision and it's your investment so we are advisors yeah i think that's the best way to put it is that from a, a perspective of when you're going down this path is information is power uh, the more information that you know about something allows you to make the best decisions for you and each of these everybody has their own personal reasons for doing one thing or another. Mm -hmm. They have their own um, experiences in the past that the past that have led them to the path that they're on right now. So for you know the three of us, when we are working with our clients, we're going to ask a lot of questions about um, you know, what is it, what is it your future looks like? What is it that you want to achieve? Where do you want to be? Um, and then we're going to try and piece together a customized roadmap. This is the one we shared today is kind of a generic one but we'll piece together a customized roadmap for you to be able to help you meet your goals, um, do the things that you want to do. You know, maybe you want to um, sell your property and buy an RV and drive across the country, you know, whatever it is. I did that. Yeah. Whatever it is um, that, that makes you do the things you want to do. But our job is to provide you with enough information to provide you with the experience that it takes a lot of that stress, that friction out of it, and that you, at the end of the day, feel like you are empowered to make the best decision for you and your future. Yeah, and I find a lot of people don't want to reach out early because they think they're bothering us mm -hmm. or they're wasting our time. Don't worry about that because our, our job really is a relationship business and building a relationship with our clients is what we want to do. And that that can happen far in advance and you're not ever wasting time reaching out where you love. We love chatting about real estate. Yeah, even if it's just a quick question, um, like we're happy to answer whatever from this as well. If anything we've talked about, if you don't, maybe you're a little bit shy and you don't feel like raising your hand or asking any of the questions, send us a quick email. Um, uh, we're happy to just shoot you back a quick note um, and let you know what our experience in this is and where it might be able to help you. We might have a few questions for you as well, uh, just to clarify what we're looking, what you're looking for. Um, but we're very ha happy just to, uh, you know, provide information so that you can make a good, informed decision. I see Janet asked the question: Should you have several? Oh, and it just dropped. Should you have several real estate gems? Would you mind helping uh, people me? check your home for giving you what your home is worth? Yeah, so I, it's all, I think it's important to interview a, a few mm -hmm. professionals, see who you connect with uh, and who gets you the most confidence. And 
I, if people are coming up with really different numbers, then that's something that you should consider. Uh, you want to have a really reasonable amount. When we do a market analysis, we're not going to inflate the number. We want to give you a number that is safe for you to bring to your financial advisor mm -hmm. and say, this is a reasonable amount we should expect in this market. We, we hope to get you more than that, but we want to give you the reasonable amount. But definitely, I think interviewing more than one professional is important. Yeah, and I think on that same note, like I think um, um, you know, being upfront with the people you're working with and letting them know, hey, I'm at the beginning stages of this. I'm going to talk to a bunch of, real, of realtors or different people to help me figure out what this plan is. Um, the only time that you might want to um, just be careful is if you've signed a contract with somebody and if you're currently signed a contract with a real estate agent, it's not a great idea to go and start to talk with other real estate agents because that can get you into a little bit of trouble. So being upfront with uh, the individuals you're working with uh, and saying, hey, I'm going to interview a, a bunch of real estate agents and I want you to come by. Tell me what the how my house is worth. Tell me what your packages look like. How you're going to be able to help me get through this uh, part of uh, of of, uh, of the process uh, is 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 a good way to go about doing it. Agreed. I'm sure a lot of people are worried about the market because the market changes so much. So, what advice would you give people that if they don't know if this is the right time to do it or not? So that is a very good question. And we wish we had a crystal ball. That would be amazing. Um, we can look at market trends mm -hmm. and let you know what times are typically better to make a move. Um, the current market is always the market that we know. So with the current market, if you're ready to sell, we know what's happening now. We know the place you're going to go to what's happening we we unfortunately especially the past few years cannot really predict how the market's going to go and it it is it can be very stressful for people we have had clients who we give a market analysis to and then a few months later we have to give them bad news that it's gone down where now we've done we're doing the opposite right now we've done market analysis maybe a month ago for people and now we're like good news your place is worth more so we once we've met with you once we're keeping our finger on the pulse mm -hmm. the thing to remember is when the market changes it changes quickly and then it is yeah so one thing that i do to help mitigate that is i'll create a scenario and it's basically, I want to under promise and over deliver. So what I'll do is that scenario is market, existing market, 30% less or whatever that denomination is, that percentage allocation so that it takes that guesswork, which thereby re removes the anxiety. I love that. And so, it, well, this is it, right? We, we all, There's so many variables that are going on in the world. If we can dispel and just say, you know what, we've got a plan for that anyway, Trudy and I, we have a plan that if the market tanks in 30, per, it becomes a buyer's market rather than a seller's market, then we can go with sort of roughly on this. And then that's where the beauty in the unison of the team that works together is then we all get on a call together or we all meet at the, the dining room table. I'll bring the coffee <laughs> and some donuts. If you're diabetic, we won't bring donuts. I got a sugar-free baker, so we're good um, as I go on a tangent here. Um, but that's the whole point is the point is um, you have, we create, we plan for as much as we can. And that's the beauty of as a, a strong advisor, but then also a real estate team. We're never going to inflate something and make it look nice and warm and fuzzy and set that expectation, knowing what we know in the industries that we're in. Like we live and eat and breathe this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I would, I would assume your advice would be, don't just wait to see what the market's going to do. You know, live a your conversation life. Conversation with us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's start putting pen to paper and having and and I don't know about whoever's on the call, but sometimes if you're anxious about something and you start talking to someone who is non-biased and who doesn't have skin in the game, it it the energy. It, you're just like, oh wait, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. I can manage this. Or maybe you know what? This is not something I'm prepared to do at the time. Exactly. Right. And we've been working through 
the ups and the downs of this real estate market yeah. and people are buying and selling in all of the different markets and they manage to make it work just because of reasons like this they yeah. have mm -hmm. alternative plans there was a question what uh so thank you mary ellen what kind of packages can realtors offer yeah this, yeah, yeah. It's very unique to real estate teams. We can speak for our packages. Uh, we offer, it's not really a la carte. It's more, it's very personalized. So we have packages that we will offer, but we will also say if you don't want this particular uh service, or, service yeah. then we can replace it with this. So if you're not really interested in having a professional cleaner come in, we can help you with storage units. Um, there's a, the packages really vary. And that's another reason why it's a good idea to interview a few professionals, because some of them may offer you more bang for your buck. Yeah. So a good, a good example of this uh, on what was Joanne was talking about is um with photography and when it comes to, um, you know, showcasing your property and having a photographer, we use professional photographers, but one of the things that has become really popular over the last few years is this aerial photography where you have a, a camera drone that goes up and it shows a whole bunch of stuff of the, of the neighborhood and it shows your property and all sorts of, it's, it, and it's become more popular because it's something that's exciting. It keeps people's attention and they watch uh, and they tend to watch, you know, through the videos a lot more. But that being said, there's, uh, even though we might have that in one of our packages, if it says something that it doesn't work, maybe you live next to an airport and the airport says, no, you can't do that. Then, you know, we'll work, work with our clients to say, well, let's swap this out with something else. Let's make sure that you have everything from this, you know, menu of, of, of uh, choices to have so that it hits what you need it to hit and, and it, um, and it allows you to get the get the best services possible. Yeah, some examples of the services. Of course, you want to get your property listed on the MLS system. You want a for sale sign on your lawn. You want open houses. You may want to have feature sheets in the house. You want to make sure that you do get that professional cleaning, the professional staging. Maybe you don't want a professional stager coming in your house. We can help you help, we can help you do a minimal staging with your own furniture. Uh, Steven and I also have a storage unit full of fluffs, pillows, <laughs> artwork, in case we've had clients who are like, I don't want the stager's furniture because I have a cat and the cat is going to wreck it. So I'll say, okay, I will bring my pillows that I use and you don't have to worry because we have a more personal relationship with our clients than they maybe they do at the stager. And yeah, photography, we can offer also floor plans. There's, there's so many different things and we like to customize it client to client to make sure that it's what you want because it's your sale. Speaking of floors, I saw a question from Janet and it was if there's multiple real estate people, it just pops up, Jen. So I can only read yep, the read in mind. <laughs> So Janet asks, what if you have several real estate people telling you to change the flooring, gut the bathroom, change all the fixtures? Ooh. Should you do everything because buyers may come in and change everything and then you wasted your money? Yeah, mm. that's a really good question. Um, ultimately, it, it boils down to a couple of things. One, um, what do your finances allow you to be able to do? Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's probably the biggest thing because investing a lot of money into... Um, uh, you know, things like that, they, they might not have that return. We as real estate professionals know that there are certain things that will have a higher return generally than other people when it, when it comes to doing these things, you know, maybe updating your kitchen, but there's also ways to be able to, you know, sometimes it just is what it is. Um, and people are looking, there's always, there's, we always like to say there's a buyer for every home and, um, and that, you know, somebody might be looking for a place that um, has retrofitted um, decor. In fact, we were working with a, a client, uh, I guess about a year ago, and we walked into this house and it was done up like it came right out of the 70s. Oh. And they were in love. They loved the shag carpet. They loved everything about it. Um, and so 
there's always something that there's, there's going to be a buyer for every every type of thing. The best bet I think in that area is one look at what some of the trends are going on in your area. Look at some of the houses in that you're being compared to that your house will be compared to. And but the biggest thing is is do you have the time? Do you have the energy and do you have the budget to be able to do these sort of things? Exactly. And if you're not in a position to be able to do the updates, we can do a market analysis on how much your house would be worth as is. And then we can do a market analysis pretending you've done, you've gutted the bathrooms, you've done the flooring. Mm -hmm. Is it going to get you more money than you spend? Usually we see the highest returns with kitchens and bathrooms, but still you're really only getting 85% of what you put into it. So it it really depends on the situation. Some of our clients have had really maybe really older looking kitchens and bathrooms and they've just replaced the countertop and painted the cabinets or had someone paint them. So there's ways that you can do it that are budget friendly as well. And I think this is the, to speak to that on a general, this is why it's so crucial for us to enlist a proper realtor, not someone who's just going to make their money on their fees, which there was a question about that, and then just kind of go off to the wayside. It's more of a consultative approach where what does the area, what does that market look like? Because even though it's in Durham region, let's say, or Toronto or Scarborough, within those neighborhoods, it's different ranges. Why would you invest $150,000 into a kitchen when in the market itself that you're in in your neighborhood won't sustain that gross or that markup on that property that's so, exactly right so having a team like joanne and, and steve like they'll tell you like it is listen you could do that but you're only going to get that 85 percent of that what's the what does that mean to you right yeah exactly and that's a really good point about the local neighborhood we've seen mm -hmm. houses that we call them over improved so they've improved them too much for the neighborhood and you're not going to get their money back so yeah, but having that saying a, location, location, yeah. location, having a local, <laughs> local and full time, I would say a full time yeah. real estate agent. There's a lot of part timers out there that might not have their finger on the pulse. They might not be in it. I know the market just changed so suddenly in the past week and a half, but we know that because we're out there with buyers, mm -hmm. we're working with sellers, we're looking at all the properties. If you're not out there every day, you won't, you won't know. So one of the questions I get for sorry no, no. Um, for clients who are considering downsizing or even buying and selling for that matter is fee structure. Mm -hmm. How does that look like from your environment? Yes, it's a great question. Yeah, so fees are negotiated between you and your realtor. What has what happens in different locations is there's usually a typical fee structure. So for example, in Durham region, the typical, it can vary. So don't quote me on this, but the typical fee structure you're looking at is a 5% commission. So 5% of the sale price. And how that works actually is half of it goes to the listing brokerage. So say the Lavoy team was your listing Realtors, it would go to our Royal LePage Frank real estate brokerage, and the other two and a half percent would go to the real estate brokerage who brought the buyer in because there's other realtors working out there with buyers, they're bringing them to your home, showing the home, and that's how the fees are split. Typically, I mean, there's always room for negotiation out there, and it's between you and your real estate agent. And the seller is usually the one who absorbs that? Correct. The seller pays the entire fee, comes out of the sale price. Did and that answer the question? Any follow-ups? <laughs> and if you want more specifics, you can get in touch with them. and they will Yes, thank you for the that. answers. Okay. Oh, you're Great. welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions for the team? Is anybody inspired now to downsize? Barbara? <laughs> um, can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, what if you live in an area where there are a lot of older homes? And these, generally speaking, these older homes are pulled down and they put up monster homes. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah. Uh, one, I mean, it's, it's not worth getting any uh, 
improvements to your house if it's just going to be pulled down. Yeah, that's how do you, something. Oh, sorry. How do you cope with that? I mean, yes, that's definitely something to take into consideration when your local real estate agent will come to your home. They'll know the neighborhood and they'll mm -hmm. say, listen, typically what's happening in this neighborhood is people are coming in tearing down the smaller homes and building new homes because they like the big lots that used to happen back in the day when they were giving you big backyards, wide frontages. So yes. we can look at the area and then we can just let you know that it's not worth it to yeah. do the improvements. Yeah. But okay. it, it would vary from neighborhood to neighborhood, but that's definitely a point to consider. I think so. I think it's important. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank are, you. Are you considering Barbara? Uh, possibly, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, awesome. thanks for the question, Barbara. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, and that's as Joanne says, it's it's a really good. This is some of the reasons why, I like, um, engaging with uh, industry professionals early in the process can help ease your mind. If you spend so much time worrying about my home is outdated mm -hmm. what do I need to invest in it to do these things you know somebody can easily come in and say you know what most of the things in this area are being updated or being changed um, so that investment uh, you know keep the money in your pocket mm -hmm. and yeah. put that towards you know something else 100 percent Jen I we're at the, the the hour there do we have any other questions or Oh, you're on mute, Jen. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You think I would be a pro at this by now. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions about possibly anything about the downsizing or anything they want to ask these guys before we let them go? This is being recorded, so it will be in the library shortly. And uh, there also is going to be a handout that I'll put on the email tomorrow morning. So you'll be able to have it in your hot little hand so you can refer to the roadmap that they've told you all about. Thank you for all your information. It was really, it was great. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah. Awesome. It was great to, uh, thank you for inviting us into your home. Yeah, we yeah. really appreciate it. The time. And if anything pops up, and mm -hmm. it's more than likely something will, um, you know, you'll end this video meeting and all of a sudden something will pop into your head and you go, oh man, I should have asked that question. Send us a message, uh, shoot us a like a quick text or whatever you want to do, and we can quickly get back to you and let you know um, what some of your options are. Yeah, and I have all their contact info, guys. So if you need it, you can just send me a quick email, and I'll send it. I'll give you all their their, their details. Wonderful. Great. It's been a pleasure sitting down with all of you today. Thank you so much for taking the time. And Jen, thank you so much for putting this all together. Yeah. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, we hope you all enjoyed listening to us uh, over the last hour. Great. Yes. And don't worry, there will be replay. People are just asking in the chat. <laughs> don't worry, it'll be in the library. Well, we do find there's a lot of uptick on the library. So you might be getting uh, messages in a couple of days, guys, because people haven't watched it yet. That's perfect. That's no, worries. no worries. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Joanne. And thank you, Trudy. Have a wonderful Thanks, day, Joanne. everyone. Right, the downsizing team. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you so soon. Much. Have thank a great you. day. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.